This is Electric Universe Eyes, and today I'm going to narrate Gaia, Greek goddess of Earth, found at paleothea.com. Background, Gaia, more frequently spelled Ge, was the Earth. She is rarely even referred to as a deity. She is more a power. What is? She was one of the firsts. Well, one of the firsts in some versions. There are actually a couple of different creation myths, and not all of them include Gaia. I know, it shocked me too. The original Greek mythology, i.e. pre-classical, was a Pelasgian myth. The Pelasgians came to Greece from the Asia Minor 3,000 years before Hesiod. The Pelasgian creation story focuses on Uranome, the goddess of all things. But you can go to the myth page on Uranome's creation story if you want to learn more about that. Here we will focus on Gaia. There are two parts. Quote, First in my prayer, before all other deities, I call upon Gaia, primeval prophetess, the Greek great earth mother, end quote, by Aeschylus. Creation of her. There are two accepted versions of classical creation, Hesiod's and Ovid's. Both versions begin with Gaia's emergence from chaos. She has a parthenogenic birth, i.e. only one parent needed. According to Ovid, Gaia pretty much just appeared, similar to the Judeo-Christian creation story. After her birth, Ovid continued to see the hand of a creator at work, an unnamed creator, who populated Gaia with the necessary mountains, seas, flora, and fauna. I much prefer Hesiod's version. Before I tell you about what Hesiod had to say, I'm going to give you this wonderful quote from his creation story. Quote, Gaia, the beautiful, rose up, broad blossomed, she that is the steadfast base of all things, and fair Gaia first bore the starry heaven, equal to herself, to cover her on all sides and to be a home forever for the blessed gods. And now back to the story. According to Hesiod, the first being sprang into existence without cause or explanation. After Gaia came Tartarus, the lowest level of the underworld, also viewed as a sort of huge cave or pit. And then came Eros, erotic love. Chaos continued her parthenogenic streak, giving birth to Erebus and Nyx. In her sleep, Gaia gives parthenogenic birth to Uranus, the universe, who emerges as big and powerful as Gaia, and Pontus, the sea and the god of the sea. Uranus bursting literally with love for Gaia, possibly only by the creation of Eros, you see, showers her with fertile rain, and this is how Gaia gives birth to the rest of creation. You remember seas, mountains, etc. We already covered this with Ovid. Gaia and Uranus also gave birth to the Titans, the three Cyclopses, and the 300 armed giants. Creation by her. There aren't tons of stories about Gaia. She's important, yes, and she shows up a lot, but not so much as an active participant in the story, so much as a default womb and mother. She has lots of kids. And what really makes her special is that she can have these kids without active participation by a father. In many ways, the universe was created by her alone. Okay, not really, but she did give birth to her son, Uranus, who then became her partner in the whole populating space thing. Once, Zeus had a wet dream at night that got Gaia pregnant too. The child of that union was Agdistus. There's a bunch of other mentions of her giving birth to people, especially men. One of the most important was Erichthonius, who founded Athens. Gaia's children include Uranus. Yes, I know he was her husband, but he was also her son. Very Oedipal, isn't it? Fifty-headed, one-hundred-armed giants, Codus, Briareus, and Gyges, the Cyclops, Brontus, Stereopus, and Argus, Cyclop means wheeled eye, the Titans, Oceanus, Coeus, Creus, Hyperion, Iapetus, Cronus, Thea, Rhea, Themis, Nemosine, Phoebe, and Tethys, the Erinus, Electo, Tisophony, and Megara, giants, born full grown with armor and spears, ouchies for Gaia. Meliads, otherwise known as the ash tree nymphs. Etna, Eurybia, Nerus, Forces, Forces, Sito, Thamos, Atlas, Atron, Antaeus, Agdistus, Erichthonius, Hylus, 
dreams, Python, the list goes on. Don't know who your mama is? That's okay. Gaia is the default, and you can always accurately claim her. A good mythical example of this is when Pyra and Deucalion had to throw their mother's bones over their shoulders. Yay, gee! The king must die. Forgive me for ripping off Mary Reynolds title, but if there's any goddess the idea really relates to, I think it would be Gaia. The theory is that every year the king was ritually sacrificed, killed by a rival, sanctified in public, or only metaphorically murdered, to renew the land and the fertility of the kingdom. I'm not really going to get any further into that because it's not actually from any Greek myth in particular, but it does seem like at least a decent introduction to the myth in which Gaia took her most active role. So Gaia and Uranus had a whole bunch of babies, as described above. Uranus, like many men, did his part in creating the children, but wasn't ready to be a daddy, and tried to stuff the new life back into Gaia's womb. Then he tried to keep the kids inside her body by blocking the entrance with his own genitals. Can you imagine? Well, Gaia turned around, inside, and gave her youngest son, Kronos, the Titan, a Sith, to cut off his papa's penis and free the children. As a consequence, Kronos also took over as the big god in charge, a role previously held by Uranus, despite the appearance that it was Gaia with the real power. Unfortunately, despite how he was put into power, Kronos only repeated the cycle. He put the giants and the cyclopses into Tartarus, a deep pit type of jail, and whenever his wife Rhea gave birth, he swallowed the baby. He was threatened, it appears, by this whole biological process that was beyond his control. After five pregnancies and five births and five babies devoured, Rhea went to Gaia, and the two conspired to keep her youngest son, Zeus, from being swallowed, and then got Kronos to vomit up the other ingested gods. With the promise from Zeus that he would free the other children of Earth, Gaia supported him in overthrowing Kronos and the rule of the Titans. Will it surprise you to learn that Zeus did not remain true to the woman who made him and put him in power? Almost immediately, he stuck Gaia's monstrous children back in Tartarus. And when his woman, Metis, became pregnant, he started getting worried that like father, like child. But he had learned more from his mothers than they intended. Rather than try to force his mate into submission or to steal her progeny, he skipped that altogether by swallowing her. When she gave birth, it was inside his body, and the child, Athena, had to be born of his body. By co-opting the labor and the birth, he kept Athena from any allegiance to a mother and broke the cycle of kings dying to maintain the proper balance of earth. The power of fertility was usurped by the patriarchy and Gaia stopped, for the most part, involving herself in the lives of her children. And in closing from the Orphic Hymn to Gaia, translated and interpreted by Virginia Stewart. O goddess, source of gods and mortals, all fertile, all destroying Gaia, mother of all, who brings forth the bounteous fruits and flowers, all variety, maiden who anchors the eternal world in our own, immortal, blessed, crowned with every grace, deep-bosomed earth, sweet plains and fields, fragrant grasses and the nurturing rains, Around you fly the beauteous stars, eternal and divine. Come, blessed goddess, and hear the prayers of your children, and make the increase of the fruits and grains your constant care. With the fertile seasons, your handmaidens, draw near and bless your supplicants. This was researched and written by Aelia Athena at paleothea.com.